Have you ever stood under a waterfall and seen the water jump ahead of you? Why would that happen? Flow separation is the answer. This is a common phenomenon occurring in both external as well as internal flows. The flow separation occurs as air flows around an object, such as a cliff, an aircraft wing, over high-rise buildings, and even around a soccer ball. In wall-bounded internal flows, when the fluid flow is expanding along a pipe, or when it is taking a 90-degree turn around the corner of an elbow, we see flow separation. The physics responsible for this phenomenon is the same for both internal and external flows. And in this lesson, we will learn about flow separation and its consequences. Let us first understand why fluid flow separates. A thin viscous region called the boundary layer is created when a viscous fluid flows over a stationary solid. In most external flows, the flow outside this viscous region can be regarded as inviscid. In these boundary layers, the velocity of the fluid at the surface of the object is equal to the object velocity. For instance, if the object is stationary, the fluid velocity on the surface is equal to zero. This is called no slip boundary of the fluid. The fluid velocity continues to grow away from the boundary until it nearly becomes equal to the free stream velocity. For the flow over a horizontal plate, the pressure gradient along the plate is continuously decreasing and remains favorable. Fluid flow cannot separate under these conditions and remains attached to the surface. However, for certain boundary layer flows, the fluid encounters adverse pressure gradients. This means the pressure is locally increasing in the direction of the flow. Under such conditions, the flow is struggling and the local velocity gradient approaches zero. At this point, the flow detaches from the surface and this detachment of fluid flow from the surface is referred to as flow separation. Beyond the separation point, a reverse flow occurs near the surface and the velocity gradient becomes negative. The streamlines following the surface of the body are now deflected away from the body. The separation point is defined using wall shear stress profile along the flow. The location along the surface where wall shear stress becomes zero is regarded as the point of separation. Beyond this point, owing to local flow reversal, the wall shear stress changes direction. The relatively low pressure region behind the body is commonly referred to as a wake. Flow separation over a body induces wakes behind this body. The interaction between these forward and reverse flows in the region generates fluid rotation or vortex structures. Depending on the Reynolds number of the fluid and the shape of the geometry, we can have either laminar or turbulent vortices. The shape of the solid body greatly influences flow separation. For example, in the flow over any backward step, the momentum of the fluid is so large that the flow cannot remain attached to the surface. In these cases, unless the fluid is acted upon by an external force, we observe flow separation. This is a representation of waterfall. Given the right conditions, you can sometimes find a dry spot behind the waterfall. From an engineering perspective, in external flows, flow separation is detrimental to both lift and drag forces. It decreases lift and increases drag. Streamlining a body helps delay this flow separation 
and streamlined bodies are employed in most external flow applications. Flow Reynolds number is another critical parameter that dictates whether flow separation occurs over a body. Reynolds number also influences the magnitude of flow separation. Despite its engineering importance, there is no concise analytical definition to measure flow separation. However, we have several analytical models to determine its exact location. In the case of laminar boundary layer flows, Thwaites correlation uses the zero shear stress criterion to estimate the separation point. Based on his correlation, Thwaites was able to calculate the momentum boundary layer thickness and the skin friction was within plus or minus 10% accurate. Stratford obtained a more accurate estimation of the location of separation point for laminar flows. His analysis is based on the fact that pressure should be minimum where flow velocity is maximum. He matched the velocities between the inner and the outer layers of the separation region to show that the coefficient of separation, which is defined as follows, satisfies this relation. In this relationship, x prime is equal to zero if v max occurs at x equal to zero. If the maximum velocity occurs at a point m downstream, then x prime is the momentum thickness at xm based on the Blasius solution over xm minus x prime. This solution can be extended to turbulent boundary layers. In this case, at the minimum pressure point x equal to xm, the velocity profile is approximated to that of a turbulent flat plate starting from a false origin x prime. Determining the value of x prime is tricky and requires additional correlations depending on whether the flow in the boundary layer is laminar, transitional or turbulent. A more precise way of predicting flow separation is to solve the boundary layer equations numerically under adverse pressure conditions. The point where the wall shear stress becomes zero is the location where flow separates. This numerical solution, however, requires some level of computer programming. Having said that, obtaining a numerical solution to the boundary layer equation is far easier compared to solving the entire set of Navier-Stokes equations. These numerical predictions are far more accurate compared to the approximate analytical solutions. Flow separation causes interesting stable patterns in nature, especially in clouds. Satellites have captured these swirling cloud patterns formed near the Guadalupe Island, which is a volcanic island rising from the Pacific Ocean. Physicists have replicated these periodic flow patterns in laboratories on simple external flows around cylinders. At a certain range of Reynolds number, periodic pairs of vortices are generated from the top and bottom surfaces of the cylinder. This stable periodically repeating trail of vortices is referred to as carbon vortex street, named after the famous physicist Theodore von Karman. The frequency of these vortices is expressed using a dimensionless number called the Strohall number. As the Reynolds number increases, the vortex street transitions into a turbulent wake, which is more complex to study. However, we can still identify these periodic fluctuations as well as their tonal frequencies until a Reynolds number of 10 to the power 5. The periodic fluctuations leads to two important effects on the surface of the body. For starters, if the flow field is compressible, these fluctuations can generate acoustic sound waves. Secondly, 
if the frequency of these fluctuations coincides with the natural frequency of the structure, we see resonant effects on such structures. One disastrous example of this is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, which is known to oscillate in windy conditions and finally collapsed in 1940. In certain flow scenarios, the separated flow reattaches back to the surface. This happens primarily when the effect of adverse pressure gradient, which was originally responsible for separation, dies out and a favorable pressure gradient returns in the flow configuration. However, the return of favorable pressure gradient sometimes is not sufficient. When the separated portion transitions from laminar to turbulent, the flow tends to reattach. This happens because turbulent flows have larger momentum to overcome these adverse pressure gradients, thereby leading to flow reattachment. 